In the last exercise, we looked at the modulus argument form of complex numbers, also called polar form. Here we continue this by looking at the basic operations on these, that is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division in the polar form. Also looking at the uh, what does it do in the Cartesian plane when we multiply or divide a complex number, where, where does it shift to? And there is some symmetry involved there. And finally, looking at de Moivre's theory, which is looking at uh, the um, uh, complex numbers in polar form to a power. So that's what uh, this chapter covers, or this section covers. First of all, in addition and subtraction, um, unfortunately we can't just simply add them in polar form like we did uh, for uh, the Cartesian form. You'll recall that if we've got, uh, oops, if we've got some um, complex numbers in Cartesian form like this, um, I don't know, that'll do. We could just sort of add the real parts and then add the other parts, and so that would have been 3 plus 4i, very easy. Um, unfortunately, in polar form, it doesn't work like that. So we first have to convert them back to Cartesian form, and that's the, the way of doing this here. Right, convert them back to Cartesian form, and then add or subtract them, as I just demonstrated there, and then convert back to polar form. Yep, bummer, but that's the way it is. So that's addition and subtraction. We have to do it in Cartesian form. Multiplication, though, for uh, polar complex uh, complex numbers in the polar form uh, is different. First of all, multiplying by a scalar, that just means multiplying by a, a number, multiplying by 2 or 3 or something like that. We have a couple of rules here. It's pretty simple, really. Uh, I've categorised them into types. The first type, if the number that we're multiplying by happens to be more than 0, that is a positive number. If that's the case, then we simply have this. Whatever, we'll do this first, whatever the modulus happens to be, you know, if the modulus in front of here was, was 2, we just multiply it by 3. So uh, if, if we were multiplying it by 3, it's just straight multiplication. So that modulus, if it was 2, becomes 3. The argument, also, it's pretty simple. We can just simply multiply the argument by whatever that number happens to be. So here, we might have had pi on 4 as the argument, multiply it by 3, it becomes 3 pi on 4. Very straightforward. So here, in this multiplication here, 3 times 2 cis pi on 4, we simply end up with, um, with this as our, uh, as our answer. The next type is looking at when uh, k is less than 0, and we have to break it up into two types. Here, k is less than 0, that is, it's negative, but the argument, the position of it, matters. If we have an argument between 0 and pi, such as we have here, that one there, then when we multiply it by k, if k is negative, then what we're doing is multiplying a negative argument, and uh, by a negative argument which produces a positive argument. So we shift it from sector uh, quadrant 4 to quadrant 2, from the negative to a positive. So that's an additional effect that we need to take into consideration, which we didn't have to worry about up here, because it was just simply kz. Here it changes the sign, and because it changes the sign, it changes the quadrant that it's in. Similarly, for uh, the argument being between 0 and pi, that is, it's positive, if we're multiplying by a negative number, then k, k is uh, negative, the argument is positive, it's going to produce a negative argument. And so, while the argument was over here, in quadrant 1, for example, it will be shifted, notice it's 180 degrees, shifted over into the third quadrant. So that's just a couple of rules there that you need to keep in mind. Here, though, is uh, the sorts of problems you're more likely to come across, and most of the exercise is on ones like these, where you've got a complex number multiplied by another complex number. Now, there's a mix of problems that you're going to come across when you're doing exercise 4D. Some of them are multiplication of complex numbers that are already in polar form, and others are multiplication of complex numbers that are in Cartesian form. Uh, here we're always going to work in polar form, so if they present you with a problem that contains Cartesian form of complex numbers, you first convert them to a, um, uh, a polar form, and then do the multiplication. Here is a proof of um, the final result of multiplying two complex numbers. So if we've got one, we've just called it Z1, 
and it's equal to R1 cis, cis theta 1, R2 is equal to R2 cis theta 2, then we can expand it out like this, of course cis of theta being cos theta plus I sine theta. So when we expand out like this, we can follow through and look, I'm just going to let you uh, download this this uh, sheet that you're looking at here is, is on the wiki, this, this file, and you can go through it yourself. But step by step, we're going through to find out exactly what when one complex number is multiplied by another equals. Now notice down here, you end up with these symmetry properties, because when you gather together the real parts and gather together the imaginary part, then you're ending up with a double angle formula. And so here from chapter 3, if you recall, we had these particular um, useful uh, identities based on the uh, double angle formulas. And so here we've got cos, cos and sine, sine of two different angles, which matches up right with this one here. So we can rewrite this as just cos of the two angles added together. The same thing happens here. We end up with sine of the two angles uh, added together. So down here, this and this are replaced by this and this. And that finally leads to, because this is cos i sine, the cis of this. So what's the point of all that? Well, you end up with the multiplication of two uh, complex numbers in polar form results in the moduluses being um, multiplied together and the angles being added together. That should be a one there. So that's, uh, that's the rule that we use. That's what you have to remember. Above is the proof and uh, you in fact require that proof in a couple of the exercises out of 4D, but that's basically what you have to remember and will use.